Hey, this is Tony Ross for CreativeCow.net, and in this lesson we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of drawing techniques, uh, how to build like little pseudo 3D type things. Uh, this is a uh, per a request I received on how to make a flower pot. So in addition to that, I actually want to show you a couple of other things that you can do uh, with these techniques. So here's what we're going to be creating. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, uh, first thing I want to go ahead and do is grab my oval tool and I'm going to set my stroke to red just because I like I personally like working this way and set the fill to none okay uh, go and simply hold down my option key and that's alt on PC and that way I can kind of click and drag out from the center just making a little oval here let go of the mouse let go of the keyboard and next thing I want to do is going to select this just to see what size it is. It says it's a width of 158, uh, which is okay. It's workable. Uh, what I was mainly trying to avoid is make sure it doesn't say 158.1 or any kind of decimals after that. Uh, when you start to animate or if you try to view this later in a site, you can kind of get little discrepancies and little artifacts if you have those little decimals there. So you want to avoid those. Okay, now I know that's 158, so I'm going to come over here now and make a rectangle. I'm just going to drag it, doesn't really matter uh, what size it is. Then I'm going to select it. Now, how many times you click and where you click in Flash matters greatly. So if you notice, I only clicked once and just grabbed one of these. If I double click, it selects the entire thing. Now, remember that number, 158. I'm going to come down here to my properties and change the width to 158. And go ahead and hit enter or return. Okay, now I can come over here and if you notice I'm getting these little line up things, which is kind of cool. And that lines up with everything pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to do next Again, don't want to double click. I'm going to do a single click here to grab part of the circle or part of the oval. Hold down my shift key and select the other part. I'm going to simply copy Command C. It's Control C on a PC. Paste in place. Command Shift V. Control Shift V on a PC. And basically I've pasted the oval on top of itself or a copy of the oval on top of itself. Now I want to move that down. I'm going to simply hold down my shift key and use my arrow keys on my keyboard. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, now, um, here's the cool thing about Flash. I'm going to click once here on the stage to deselect stuff. Uh, I can simply click lines that I don't want and press delete or backspace on PC. Press here, delete, okay, and Let's say if we're going to do that little high school thing of like, uh, this is a cylinder you can see through. Let's just select this back area here, come down to my stroke, and let's make that dotted. Click once on the stage. Cool. We have a cylinder. I'm going to grab this little guy and move him out of the way for right now. Okay. Uh, and let's try one additional thing here. Uh, what if I decided to take the same guy, I'm going to hold down my option key, Alt on PC, click and drag this down, I can make a copy, and grab my free transform tool, and now I'm going to hold down Command, Option, and Shift, Control, Alt, Shift on PC, and I'm going to click one of these corners, and I can do a little bit of perspective. Okay, now, let go of my keyboard, and looks a little off. Well, let's see if we can adjust that. I can grab one of these rings here, start bringing it up, grab the top ring here, bring it down a bit. Okay, and that's what we have so far. All right, let's go ahead and try to make our flower pot. So, I'm going to go to the oval tool. I'm going to click and drag out. Actually, this would be a lot better. Let me redo this. Ah, Command Z, and make sure I get to the right kind of tool, my little solid line here. I'm going to hold down my Option key, Alt on PC, click and drag from the center. 
looks pretty good. Now, uh, what I want to do next is I'm going to do a little shortcut. I'm going to hold down my Command key, Control on PC, and just select the circle. Note if it's a circle or oval, you only have to click once to select everything. Okay, I want to copy this, Command C, Control C on PC, paste it in place, Control Shift V, Command Shift V on PC, and I'm going to go to my free transform tool and I'm going to hold on my option key and kind of scale this guy in. All right, now I'm looking at this going, yeah, this is kind of snapping a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to undo this, Command Z. I'm going to turn my snapping off, this little, little guy right here. I'm going to click Snap to Objects and turn that off. So I'm going to hold on my option key and bring this in and kind of adjust this let go of the mouse, let go of the keyboard. So basically I've got two rings there. Alright, now let's see, it's 242, that's for the width of this one. So I'm going to make a little rectangle. Doesn't matter what size it is because I'm going to control it in the properties in a second. Uh, shortcut, hold on my command key, double click on the rectangle to select all of it. And actually forgot something here. Let's go ahead and uh, get our sizes here. That's 242 and the inner is 226.1. Hmm. 226. Okay. Let's go back here. Double click. And our width is going to be 242. All right. And now I'm just going to move this and get it about right here. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna click once on the stage. And what I wanna do next is select just this bottom ring. I'm um, only clicking once. And I'm going to copy that, Command C, paste in place, Command Shift V. Hold on my Shift key. Now the reason I'm holding down my Shift key, if I just use my arrow keys on the keyboard to go down, it would only move in uh, one pixel increments. If I hold down shift, it's going to be in 10 pink pixel increments. Okay, that's pretty decent. All right, I'm going to select the stage just once there to deselect everything. And now I'm just going to select all the elements that I don't want and press delete. Uh, backspace on PC. Uh, I honestly probably could select all these on holding down the shift key and then just kind of go ahead and uh, delete things all at once, but I'm doing it one at a time here. Uh, I'm going to click just the middle one. I'm going to leave these other guys up here for a second. Okay, now, so we've got that part done. And what I want to do next is make a little rectangle. I'm going to try to estimate, or actually let's do this even better. Let's cheat. Uh, let's do a view rulers. This is going to make sense in a second. I'm going to grab my free transform tool. I'm not going to transform anything as much as I am looking for the dead center of everything. So I'm just going to click here because all I need is this little, these little guides here. Now I'm going to click on my ruler and drag a guide over just so I know where the center of this is. All right, that's done. Good. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a rectangle. And now I know where the center is. I'm going to hold down my Option key, Alt on PC, and drag out a decent little thing here. I don't want it as wide, but I do want it to be pretty much centered. Okay, now I'm going to Go to my free transform tool, double click, and that selects everything. Uh, then we're going to do a little more perspective. Uh, Command, Option, Shift, and that's Control, Alt, Shift on PC. I'm just dragging the bottoms in here. Let go of the mouse, let go of the keyboard. Looks good. And let's hold on my Shift key and move that up until it's kind of touching there. This looks like the rim is almost a little too big for me, so I'm going to widen this a bit. 
I'm going to hold down my option key and kind of that way if I'm holding an option it's pulling off both ends at the same time I think that's uh, about there is pretty good okay now I'm going to click once on the stage to deselect and I'm going to go to my selection tool and we're going to start getting rid of things we don't need delete and I'm going to zoom in here because there's some little artifacts I want to get rid of it's a cool thing about vectors you don't have to worry about it getting all bit mapped on you by the way um, several little shortcuts I want to show you hold down my spacebar um, even though I'm on the selection tool hold on my spacebar I can move this little guy around and if I really wanted to see everything I can simply press F4 and it hides all my windows okay press F4 again brings them back okay so move this around a bit okay get rid of that little extra line and I'm going to double click on my magnifying tool or my zoom tool just to get back to normal size okay now next thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to select one of our little circles here I'm going to grab this little inner guy, copy it, command C, paste in place, command shift V, and I'm going to hold on my shift key, use my down arrow, bring this down to about the base there. That's good enough. Uh, click once on the stage to deselect, and then again start selecting all the parts I want to get rid of. Okay, now if you're thinking, oh, the base is, nah, it could be a little more curved. Uh, I'm going to grab my free transform tool and maybe kind of stretch this guy out a bit. I'm going to zoom in, command plus. Okay, double click on my zoom tool. That looks pretty decent. Okay, now we're almost there. So, next thing I want to do, I'm going to select this top or actually the second little line here. Copy it, Command C. And let's Control C on PC. Paste in place, Command Shift V. And that's Control Shift V on PC. And hold on my Shift key, move this guy down a little bit. That's my arrows. And select once, or just click once on the stage. And now, let's go in and get rid of all of our extra things that we don't need. I'm going to hide my windows here for a second, F4, and let's get my little tool, select that, delete, select, delete, select, delete, select, and delete, and I can finally get rid of these guys, delete, and delete, okay, now let's bring back our little windows here, F4, and we're going to simply double click on the zoom tool, get back to normal. Um, I'm also going to hide this guide because I'm pretty much done with it now and so that's kind of command semicolon and that's control semicolon on PC and it's not too bad but let's go ahead and give it some color shall we uh, let's go ahead and grab our paint bucket and we're gonna go to our fill and I'm just gonna go to gradient I like a nice little black to white gradient down here okay and I'm going to fill that area. I'm going to fill this area and fill this back area and for the rim I'm actually going to do a solid gray and just fill that area there and one last thing I'm going to give it a kind of a little resemblance of dirt or something. Uh, I'm going to fill this area just with a solid black. Okay and it might look weird now but give me a second so what I want to do next I'm going to go to my gradient transform tool and in CS3 this actually is coupled with the free transform tool in earlier versions it is sitting by itself but basically what we'll do is click on one of the sections of the gradient and I can move the gradient over a little bit and I want to do this just to kind of give a little bit of difference between this gradient and the other one Okay, now the next trick 
I want to select this inner guy here. And let's go back to high school for a second, okay? So if the light is coming this way, so our shadow's here, this guy in here, we're gonna do reversed. So I'm gonna come over here and rotate this, spin it all the way around, and instantly this looks pretty freaking cool. Okay. Um, also, I think I've gotten I've gotten this going over too much here, so I'm going to select this guy. Ah, there it is. Uh, I want to widen this a little more to make sure it's covering the whole thing, so we didn't go to a pure white there. Okay, now, next thing I want to do is, just going to click on the stage to deselect everything. Um, this looks neat, except for like, there's like red lines and, and stuff. So, let's, let's get rid of those. I'm going to click and drag to select everything. Go to my stroke area, and it's set to red. Let's set it to none. Okay, and this might be a little bit hard to see now. I'm going to change the color of my background. Okay, that looks a little better. Now, uh, let's do one additional step because this is like gray and like a flower pot should be like clay. So, hey, let's uh, make this terracotta or something. Okay, I'm going to click and drag, select everything. I'm going to convert this to a symbol. So I'm going to press F8. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that as a graphic and we're going to call this flower pot and enter return okay shows up in my library cool now the reason I made this a symbol is because we can do little fun things like uh, set it to a tint okay wow that was instant well that's because I did this before okay so let's show you what exactly I did um, I set the color that I wanted and then Instead of it being 100%, this is actually set to 66% as far as how much tint we're printing in, and return and enter. Okay? And so there we have our flower pot. This has been Tony Ross for creativecow.net, and remember, make it simple, make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea.